If you have dry eye syndrome or blepharitis, all of the various treatment options can be overwhelming. In today's video, I'll go over the way that I think about all of the various treatment options. I call it three buckets. So let me tell you what it's all about. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. Today I'm talking about my philosophy when it comes to dry eye syndrome. Before we get started, this channel is all about education and I love creating a community of pupils that love to learn about the eyes. So if you have a friend or relative this information could help, this video is easily shared right here from YouTube. First of all, as a dry eye specialist, I definitely follow the recommendations for treatment that come from Do's too. And so if you haven't already checked out the Home Remedies for Dry Eye Do's video, check that out right here because everything I'm doing really uses that as a foundation, right? So this isn't in lieu of that video. This is an addition and kind of how I think about treating dry eye. So I view basically all dry eye syndrome treatments as falling into three different buckets. The proper treatment for you is going to be the combination from the buckets that works for you. So one of the things about dry eye that can be so frustrating for people is that there's so many options. And unfortunately, to some degree, it is a little bit of trial and error. But your dry eye specialist should be able to help you make more directed, educated decisions for your spe specific scenario and pull from each of these three buckets. So the three buckets are do-it-yourself or at-home treatments. These are the things that are kind of under your control and need to become a part of your daily routine. The second are prescription, that's a prescription bucket. So these are all the things that I can prescribe for you. And the third are advanced in-office type of procedures. One, two, three. Do-it-yourself, RX, in-office. So let's talk about the do-it-yourself options. Warm compresses one to three times daily. These alone don't do the best job of getting severely clogged oil glands working again, but they can help keep oil from becoming stagnant in your glands. Lid scrubs also fall into this category. You're gonna do those every day. Think of this like you do brushing your teeth. You do it every day, but it doesn't mean you can skip going to the dentist a couple of times a year. Lid scrubs are gonna help you maintain a healthy microbiome on your lids, but they may not fully cure your blepharitis on their own. The next thing in the at-home bucket is preservative-free artificial tears, three to four times a day. You can't do them too much, but they're really just treating symptoms. And so if you're having to do them more than three to four times a day, we probably need to pull from a different bucket to help you more. Avanova spray. This is the hypochlorous acid spray that I've made videos about before. This can help restore an overgrowth of Demodex mites to normal levels. Nightly ointment falls in this too. If you wake up with painful, gritty, dry eyes in the morning, adding in a preservative-free ointment before bed might be a good option. In the at-home bucket lies environment, right? So think about your surroundings and your setup at home, at work, in the car, etc. You're gonna wanna avoid blowing air, keep those windows up and air vents pointed away from you, ensure good humidity levels, so setting up a humidifier next to your bed while you sleep or at your desk while you work, and protect your eyes, wearing sunglasses that wrap closely to your face when you're outside, wearing a protective mask while sleeping to seal in moisture. Also in this bucket is nutrition. So consider an anti-inflammatory diet, add fish oil to your medication regimen, and make sure to pack your meals with omega-3s and other anti-inflammatory ingredients. And skincare is also in this bu bucket, skincare and cosmetics. Do an audit of your skincare and makeup to ensure that you're not accidentally exposing your eyes to pro-inflammatory ingredients. Read over the makeup guide and see how your current routine stacks up to my recommendations. I'll make sure to link my makeup guide below. You may need to consider a different mascara, eyeliner, or eye cream. So you can see that that do-it-yourself or at-home bucket is probably the biggest one. There's a lot in there. And we've made an entire series about at-home remedies. I'll link the playlist up above because I think that that's a very critical bucket when it comes to treating your dry eye. You're gonna have to find 
the right things out of that bucket to integrate into your routine in order to feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. Now the second bucket is the RX bucket or prescribable things, things your doctor can do for you, which we can do steroids. You know, we'll, we'll use steroids sometimes um, for up to a month at a time, sometimes much shorter term, just one to two weeks at a time. Um, this isn't something you wanna do all the time though because steroids for long periods of time can cause other eye issues like cataracts, um, decreased healing, and high eye pressure. We also use Restasis, Sequa, Zydra. Um, think of that as a from now till forever drop. That's gonna require you to take it every day and it's often gonna require a prior authorization. I've made a video all about prior auths and I'll link it right here. So this is one to bear with your doctor as we navigate which one is gonna be approved by your insurance. Sometimes you'll see doctors prescribe a steroid and one of these longer term dry eye drops together and that is very typical as well. We also sometimes use doxycycline from the prescription bucket. That's used to work on the oil glands and encourage better oils. Doxycycline is often prescribed twice daily for a month and then once daily for a month, but your doctor may have their specific instructions. Um, and it can also be a little tough on your tummy, so make sure to take a probiotic or ask your doctor for recommendations as you take doxycycline. We also have Oxervate. In the case that your corneal sensitivity is decreased, we can put you on Oxervate. I made a whole video about that as well. That's a drop that you take six times a day for eight weeks, but it helps you regenerate your corneal nerves and decrease your dry eye symptoms. I also lump in the RX bucket um, autologous serum because that is something that I prescribe. It's um, all in all basically an artificial tear, but those are the blood drops that we're taking from your blood. So you can see it takes a little combination of the buckets. Now the third bucket are advanced treatments. So this is microblepher exfoliation, which we talked about in this video here, as well as IPL in this video, and tear care, a heat plus expression of your glands. And oftentimes these in-office treatments are absolutely needed to just spur along your treatment and get you feeling better a lot more quickly. Microblepher exfoliation is gonna cleanse and exfoliate that lid margin, get rid of your biofilm. Um, and, and you know, oftentimes lid scrubs can't do that. You need a more intensive treatment. Like I talked about earlier, brushing your teeth every day is great, but you still form some plaque. Cleansing your lids every day is great, but you still form a biofilm. So this mechanical exfoliation can be very, very helpful in cleaning the lid margins and just setting you up for healthier tears. The second is tear care, so that's the heat and expression. Um, my treatment counselor uses a really great analogy of a lotion bottle. So you can imagine a lotion bottle that you haven't used in a while and there's that hard crusty bit kind of on the end. And once you pump a couple of times and that hard crusty bit comes out, the rest of the lotion flows out. Well, it's kind of like that with the glands. We heat up those glands, your doctor goes through and expresses and they get that clogged crusty bit out of your lid so that the good oil can flow again. And then in office we have IPL or intense pulse light. It's a wonderful treatment option that's especially helpful with ocular rosacea, but has recently become FDA approved for all types of dry eye. This helps get rid of inflammation um, by getting rid of telangiectasias or little blood vessels that have popped up on the lids and the skin. In addition, your doctor might have other in-office treatments. Um, one that comes to mind are LLLT, so LED lamps. Some doctors are using that. And then we also have radio frequency that doctors are using to help clear the glands and loosen up the oil as well. A ton of these points I'm talking about today, I've made videos about and so there's no way YouTube's gonna let me link all of them above. So what I'm gonna do is link out to my home remedies playlist and my dry eye playlist down below and my makeup and skincare playlist because really as you put together, if you're watching this channel to put together a dry eye treatment regimen and understand more about how that works, that's what today's video is, is bringing together all of it. And for me, again, there's three buckets we're pulling from at home, do it yourself, creating good habits. We're pulling from our prescription options and we're pulling from our advanced therapies. And so feel free to check out the other educational videos I've done on each 
of those separate topics because I think that'll really help you understand and kind of audit your own life and your own makeup and your own skincare to get the best treatment for you. So I hope that helps. That's kind of my philosophy on dry eye. Remember the right combo of treatments is different for everybody. So good luck in finding yours. Please leave me comments down below to let me know what your magic, um, your magic combination is. I'd love to hear that from you guys. That's it for today. I will see you next time.